Renee Enriquez rose to become one of the highest ranking members in California's Mexican Mafia. He spent over 20 years of his life as a gang leader for the organization that's also known as La M.A. and had a reputation as being one of the Mexican Mafia's most ruthless and feared members. But after decades of living as a violent Mafia gangster, Rene Enriquez decided he was done. And just like that, he became a person that Mafia organizations consider the lowest of the low. He became an FBI informant. Rene Enriquez was born on July 7, 1962 in Los Angeles, California. He was raised in Cerritos, a city 20 miles outside of LA, and grew up in a middle-class neighborhood. Enriquez's father was a hard worker who came from poor beginnings, but worked to build up a successful business. After marrying Enriquez's mother, the two went on to have five children together. As a kid, Enriquez showed signs of promise, and his parents hoped he would one day enter into the family business. But as Enriquez got older, it became increasingly clear that he would be headed down a much different path. At the age of 11, Enriquez started stealing and hanging out with his older brother in the nearby city of Artesia. At the age of 12, following in his older brother's footsteps, he joined the neighborhood gang, the Artesia 13, and picked up the nickname Boxer. At the age of 14, Enriquez started doing drugs, even becoming a drug dealer at his high school to support his habit. And by the age of 16, Rene Enriquez was a full-fledged drug addict and gang member, dropping out of high school in the ninth grade. All throughout his teen years, Enriquez was involved in crimes and gang-related activities. Fights and shootouts were the norm in his neighborhood, and to support his drug habit, he would steal and rob local grocery stores. In 1981, while still a teenager, Enriquez was arrested after committing 21 armed robberies. He was found guilty and sentenced to nine years in prison. Soon after entering prison, he was contacted by a high-ranking Mexican Mafia member and asked to carry out a mission that involved stabbing a fellow inmate who had fallen out of favor with the Mafia. He eagerly accepted the request and accepted every other request that came after that. Soon he became La Ime's go-to guy if they ever needed someone dealt with. After three years of working closely with the Mexican Mafia, proving he was fearless and willing to do whatever was needed to strengthen the gang's power, he was asked to join them. And in 1985, at the age of 22, Rene Boxer Enriquez became an official Mexican Mafia member. Enriquez quickly rose to prominence within the organization by committing numerous hits on enemies behind bars and by working to get the gang more organized. Then, in 1988, Enriquez was released on parole. Upon his release, he immediately continued his work for the Mexican Mafia, collecting money called street tax from neighborhood gangs and confronting any gang member that didn't follow the Mexican Mafia rules. Enriquez was ruthless while on the streets, and he was known to exact revenge on anyone who crossed him. He proved this to be true when just two years after being released from prison, and while still on parole, he was arrested on two murder charges. One was for the killing of a woman who had stole from him, and the other, a fellow Mafia member who had been labeled as a coward and an embarrassment to the organization. While in jail awaiting trial for those crimes, Enriquez attempted two other murders inside the Los Angeles County Jail, two fellow gang members that had disrespected the organization. However, both men survived. In 1993, Enriquez was found guilty of his crimes and sentenced to 20 years to life. The state sent him to California's Pelican Bay Prison to serve out his time. But this didn't stop Enriquez. In fact, it made him go even harder. He continued to control his gang territories on the street and set up an elaborate drug and money laundering system that earned him over $50,000 a year. And he did it all from his prison cell. Even being locked in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day, Enriquez managed to put together an entire crew that he ran out of Pelican Bay. The group would speak in code and pass messages through visitors, mail service, and kites to avoid being detected. This continued on for 10 years, and Enriquez became a high-ranking senior member of the Mexican Mafia, tattooing the infamous black hand on his chest to show his affiliation. Enriquez, along with other high-ranking Mexican Mafia members, controlled almost all of the Los Angeles Latino street gangs from inside the prison. Enriquez himself confirmed he was also responsible for convincing street gangs to end all drive-by shootings in the early 90s, a move that resulted in the Mexican Mafia gaining a stronger control. 
But as the years dragged on, Enriquez grew weary of the gangster lifestyle. His teenage drug addiction had continued on into adulthood, as even behind bars it was easy for him to get the drugs he wanted. He had spent more than half of his life in prison. He had watched countless associates be killed by enemies, or worse, by their own Mexican Mafia brothers. And he recognized that the Mafia rules were changing, as now families and children were being put in danger due to the organization's violence. He had also gotten word that one of his oldest friends wanted him dead. So, in 2002, at the age of 39, Rene Boxer Enriquez dropped out of the Mexican Mafia. He immediately began working with multiple law enforcement agencies such as the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department and the FBI. He recorded numerous videos where he told them everything he had learned over his 20 years of working with the Mexican Mafia, including how many members there were, who was in charge, and how the organization planned everything from killings, extortions, and drug deals, to money laundering, gang initiations, and robberies. He even explained the meaning behind the Mafia's secret codes, their symbols, and all their tattoos. Enriquez wore wiretaps and testified as an expert witness in dozens of criminal trials. His testimonies helped to put away at least 35 Mexican Mafia members. In exchange for his work as a Mafia consultant for the FBI, Enriquez was compensated more than $50,000 and moved to a protected prison where he received special perks and treatment. Years after first becoming an FBI informant, Enriquez continued to work with the government. In 2015, 175 business leaders and executives were invited to a dinner in Los Angeles where Rene Enriquez was the surprise guest speaker, there to explain to a packed room the inner workings of the Mexican Mafia. The evening was highly criticized by the LA media after it was revealed that the cost of security to transfer Enriquez to and from prison for the event cost taxpayers $22,000. Enriquez has also co-written three books on the subject of the Mexican Mafia. In Chris Blatchford's book, The Black Hand, Enriquez explains that everything he has done since leaving the Mexican Mafia was so that he could help teach young people about the dangers of joining gangs, and to warn them that the gangster lifestyle is disastrous. He says, Gang life is like falling into an abyss. It's no life, or rather, it's a life with no future. Today Enriquez remains in prison, in protective custody, but because of his cooperation with the government, he's expected to one day be released. Many law enforcement agents support his release, saying Enriquez is not the same man that he was years ago. However, in 2019, Enriquez's parole was blocked for the fourth time by the governor of California, who believes that Enriquez's history of violence means he may still be a danger to society if set free. It's been 18 years since Rene Enriquez dropped out of the Mexican Mafia, but those close to the situation know that even after all that time, there will still be those looking for revenge against him for his betrayal. If Enrique is ever released from prison, he's expected to live under a federal witness protection program as authorities believe his life is in danger, and most likely, it always will be.